This is a basic guide on a fully customizable and animatable 3D Minecraft logo that you can use for free in DaVinci Resolve. The first thing you need is DaVinci Resolve. If you already have it then you can skip over to the next chapter. Head over to the top link in the description and scroll down to find the free download now button and just select your operating system and fill in this form then you should be able to download the program. When going through the installation wizard I recommend just keep everything ticked as it is by standard if you don't actually know what you're doing. Otherwise just go through this installation wizard like you would with any other program and just install. Next step is to download the assets and effect we need in DaVinci Resolve to make the generator. So if you go into the description under assets you should find two download links. One for a DRFX file or the effect in DaVinci and a font that we need to actually generate the text. Just download them both and install them respectively. For the font, you just double click and you press install right here. For the DRFX file, you should also be able to just double click if you have DaVinci Resolve installed. And it will open DaVinci Resolve and then you will get a button that says install or something along those lines. For me, it says overwrite because I also already have it installed. Next, we will actually create a logo. And if you want, I will also show you how you can animate some basic motions. Depending on if you want to animate something on top of an already existing project, or if you want to just render out an image, you will either open up that project in this menu or press the new project button down here. When you first open up your project, it might look something like this. And you want to head over to the edit window down here and make sure you have effects selected up in the left corner. This will open up a window with a lot of effects. And we want to head over to where we installed our effect, which is under toolbox and effects right here. Here we have two groups, one called effects and one called fusion effects. And you should be able to see the Minecraft 3D text effect here. If you don't, then you should try to open up the DRFX file again and make sure you actually installed it. But we need to apply this to something on the timeline. The only one I know works is Fusion Composition. So just drag and drop the Fusion Composition onto the timeline and then just drag and drop the effect onto that. Now, if you select the Fusion Composition and you make sure the inspector up in the right corner is selected, then you should have the ability to press this effect button which will give you all these options for things that we will use. If you can't actually press the effects button then make sure that you have the composition selected and also have applied the effect onto that composition. To better see what we're actually doing you should be able to press this open effect in fusion button next to the name of the effect. This will give us three nodes down here and we want to select the one called Minecraft 3D text and then we will have our options up here in the inspector. Let's go through all the settings uh, for these variables and what they do. Some of them being very straightforward and some of them I can give you some tips and uh, tricks that may be helpful when you're working with this. Note that all standard values for these variables are set to look as closely to the original logo as possible. So if you just want it to look like the Minecraft logo, then you shouldn't really have to adjust these values. The title input is where you put the name of the text or the logo that you want. Like for example, if I want to put Minecraft. If you can see something here, then make sure that you have the font installed and also that scale isn't set to zero because in that case then you can't see nothing. Also note that some letters, specifically A, C, E, F, look different depending on if they're capitalized or not. With the capitalized versions being more closely to the Minecraft logo, you can use both to give some variety in your image but use the capitalized versions if you want it to look like the Minecraft logo. Character spacing is the space between every character. Rotation is the angle of the text. You can rotate it pretty much every angle, except beyond 90 degrees, because that wouldn't make sense. It looks a bit off, but that's just because that's how you have to do it to make this look right. Extrusion is the thickness of the text. Stroke is the thickness of the black outline around the text. Scale is the size of the text, and I recommend you keeping it so um, the text almost goes outside the border because it does change the perspective a little bit. Like if I make it small, you can see that it, 
it has the same angle on the sides like it does when I enlarge it. So I recommend trying to keep it as large as possible just so that looks correct. Highlight size is the thickness of that highlight that goes around the edge of the text. This one isn't really that useful but I mean if you want to change it you can. So offset cracks is used to adjust these generated cracks that you can use to like spice up the text. These are not perfect and I would recommend you just not using them by just clicking off cracks because they don't work in every case and you just have to live with that. There's really no way to automatically generate working cracks in every possible letter combination or there could be and if I have found a better way there should be a pinned comment about that. If not then no can help you. Selecting these triangles or clicking across this gradient will make you able to edit the colors in this box down here so you can set any color you'd like to your logo and under that you have the highlight color you can change that one as well and the same goes for the bottom side of the logo you can have it any color you like and after that we have pretty much the same settings again but these are for a flipped version of the text that you could use to make something in the style of the update logos that Minecraft makes. So for example, aquatic update, I will put in there. You will see that it's very off and most of these settings are the same, but I will, I will note all the differences and how to fix that mess. First of all, if you did rotate your top text, then you want to make sure you have rotated the bottom one the same amount, so these two lines should be parallel to each other. The one on the top text and the one on the bottom text. So if they are parallel, then you have rotated them the right amount. The sub offset here on the x and y axis is to move it, so you can actually adjust the position. Here we can see that we need to move it a little bit to the left just so it lines up with these two corners. When you scale it, sometimes if the text is too long, it will be very small in, in height. Does that make sense? So I have a vertical scale here just so you can stretch it out. Th this will work in some cases and you will realize when they work, but you can just adjust this a little bit and it can look better. I usually, when it's not extremely long, I will try to make it so the height of this front face is the same height as that one. So in that, this case it would be like that amount, but this is too extreme and you will never be in that situation. So it will probably be more like, like this maybe, if that makes sense. You have the same gradient and you have the same, all the colors. You can also enable the cracks on this one if you want to. They work the same way. They're just flipped upside down. Now if you want to animate this, I will use one simple element from the intro animation that I showed. And I will animate just the character space. First we can enable spline up here at the top to, to get this graph menu. This will be where the keyframes show up. And so I will keep my playhead at zero and next to the variable there is a little icon that will create a keyframe. And then I will move it just a few frames and make another one. Now I will actually animate this. If I go back to the first keyframe then I can just extend these letters out and just scale this down so I can see it. If you just let it render, this should be animated. Okay, let's see how this looks. It's very linear, and if you select these keyframes, you get the base here, handle things, and you can make it more smooth if you want to. You can mix around however you like with these, but I would waste a lot of time with it. If you want to animate a lot of things, you can do that. There's a lot of possibilities to animate things, but this will be everything that I do. Uh, one thing to note, I should have said this before, if your graph doesn't show up here, it may be because it's not selected from this, the side menu. Like only some things actually show up here. But you have the control text, here's the character spacing, and uh, 
if I keyframe more things that they will show up here too, but I haven't. So there shouldn't be a lot of things to choose from in this menu. But it can be that just the thing you're looking for isn't ticked in this menu. Okay, when rendered, this is how the animation looks. Wow, this brings me into the last step, which is exporting. And I will start with just the image. If you want to export an image, you just right click in the preview menu, preview window, and you press save image. And make sure you set the file type to PNG. Name it whatever you like and put it anywhere. And this will give you a transparent image. Just like this one. Now if you instead want to export a video with transparent background, you will first have to go back to the edit window down here and make sure that you have your fusion composition selected. And just go back to fusion and the node window will look a little bit different. There will just be a media out and you want to add a background to this one. So this icon right here is the background node. This will at a background node. So what you do is you just uh, drag and drop the background so it connects to the media out. Then have it selected and you should have some settings for your background in the inspector. You want to just set alpha to zero so it's transparent again. Then you need to head over to deliver which is where you actually render the animation. Here we will have to put in some settings to make sure it renders with alpha. And you can probably do that in many different ways, but I will just show you one. I will I will give it a name like animation and misspell it. You can choose where you want to save it and I will save it in downloads. Make sure the format is set to QuickTime and set the codec to GoPro Cineform. Then set type to RGB and that should give you the option for exporting alpha down here. And that's pretty much all you need to do. Add it to the render queue over here and render. You can see that in this case it actually didn't render and that is because these few frames in the end are black. I'm not an expert and I can't really explain why but in the, if that happens just crop them out from the end of your composition in the edit window. Then you should try to render again. Yeah, replace it and render. And we can see here that it's completed. And if I try to find it, here's our animation.mov. You probably can't open this in anything because it's a transparent background and it breaks and stuff. But if you're making animation with a transparent background, you, you probably know what you're doing and you can open this in, in any edit program so we can actually just import it back and see how it looks to actually prove that it's transparent we can put a solid color behind make it i don't know green and here we can see that our animation works and that's it if any problems occur i suggest just quickly look in the comments because somebody may have had the same problem then I will pin that comment or just make sure that you find that information somehow. If not, just ask. Maybe someone can help. Maybe I can help. Or Google it. And this effect might be broken in the future. But it's very cool that it works. And even though it's not perfect, you know, it gets the job done. And it's it's at least it's better than text craft, okay? <laughs> so I hope I hope you like it. My apologies if my instructions are unclear. If you instead want to do this manually, I have a very strict Photoshop only tutorial right somewhere. Watch that one if you want to do it manually. That's how I do it personally because I like to have a lot of control. But it costs money to have Photoshop so I wouldn't recommend it. And please don't subscribe because I make Swedish content and you wouldn't want that.